I know that last week, and y'all are going to have to stop. I know that um, last week, Friday, we were talking about the Three Governors episode, the Three Governors controversy. Let me just kind of walk through that again, um, mainly for those who are getting this on video, um, if anybody bothers to check their email, um, which I doubt they do. But anyway, so the Three Governors episode uh, begins with the death of Eugene Talmadge. He has won the governor's election, but he dies before he can take the oath of office. Um, Ordinarily, that wouldn't be a problem, but Georgia has just elected their first lieutenant governor, and he hasn't taken his oath of office, so there is no lieutenant governor. Three people end up fighting over who should be governor. Ellis Arnold, who's the outgoing, Melvin Thompson, who won the lieutenant governor's race, and Eugene Talmadge's son, Herman, who, um, according to him, had the most write-in votes. And, of course, we know there was some voter fraud involved with that. Fifty-six people rose up out of their grave in Telfair County and voted for Herman Talmadge, wrote him in. Um, Arnold, of course, thinks he should be governor until they can figure it out. Um, Thompson feels he should be governor because, after all, he won the lieutenant governor's office. I think he has the most legitimate claim. Um, And, of course, Herman says he should because he won uh, more write-in votes than anybody else. There are the three, um, Arnold, Thompson, and Talmadge. And it, it really does get ridiculous. Arnold locks himself in the office. Um, Talmadge is able to get him out of the office, changes the locks on the office. Um, Arnold sets up shop in the lobby of the Capitol building, has a desk, and acts as the governor. Yeah, I mean, it's really bizarre. Um, Talmadge is actually elected governor by the General Assembly. Georgia Supreme Court says, eh, wait a minute, Thompson should be governor, but we're going to hold a special election. The Georgia Supreme Court could have put it all to bed had they just stuck to their guns and said Thompson is the legal governor of Georgia, but they don't. Talmadge is elected governor in that special election. And then we talked about five different Georgia governors during this period. Um, Melvin Thompson, um, Jekyll Island, UGA Vet School, Herman Talmadge, who's a lot like his father, uh, but does 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 make some um, some advances in education, the nine month school year, for example. Uh, Marvin Griffin, um, who, by the way, was also a strict segregationist, he said that Georgia would never segregate its schools, um, and he promised he ran on a promise of of that particular idea. Um, he buy, does buy Stone Mountain, which has its own little set of problems, and then Carl Sanders. Um, Lester Maddox, elected 1966. Um, You're going to read a little blog from Stan Deaton where he is going to compare um, Lester Maddox to Donald Trump, particularly in the way they are elected um, and the way that they go about their business. Maddox does, however, do some things that are unexpected. He um, appoints more African-Americans to office than all of his predecessors combined including integrating the state um, patrol. But to his dying day, he thinks that, interestingly, and you're going to read this, he thinks that segregation is wrong, and he thinks that integration is wrong. Go figure. Anyway, so what we're going to talk about today, and we're going to finish this up today, um, is really Georgia business, how we trade with the world. What do we trade with the world? Um, Georgia is the center of the Southeast. Atlanta in particular is the center of the Southeast um, because of its, our ability to transport, transport not only people, but goods, um, products, that kind of thing. We have four major systems of transportation, aviation, of course, Hartsfield Jackson International Airport um, in Atlanta. It's not the only airport in Georgia, but it is by far the biggest. It's actually the busiest airport in the world. Uh, We have the interstate highway system. You have four major um, interstate highways that pass through Georgia. 
I-95, I-75, I-85, and all and I-20. Um, which one did I leave out? 441 is not an interstate. It's a state highway. Or it's a U.S. highway. I-16 is not in there. Why? I'll show you on the map in a second. I-16 doesn't go all the way through Georgia. It begins in Macon and ends in Savannah. It's not a true interstate because it doesn't connect Georgia to another state. Um, the deep water ports, we've talked about Savannah and Brunswick earlier. Haven't mentioned St. Mary's. St. Mary's is more naval uh, based than it is um, civilian uh, shipping. Um, but because of Savannah and Brunswick, we have a lot of domestic um, and international goods that come into Georgia. We're able to ship things out of Georgia. Remember, Savannah is the country's largest container um, shipping port. And we talked about that earlier. Now, railroads. Um, railroads used to be the thing. 1800s, Civil War destroyed all the railroads. Uh, they were built during the late 1880s, 1890s. Um, and today, businesses don't really rely on rail to transport goods. Um, more so the other three. In fact, I couldn't tell you the last time I was stopped by a train in Milledgeville, Georgia. It's been years. Yeah, because they just don't come through here anymore. Took the steam plant out, tore it down. They don't have coal trains going to the um, to Harley Branch anymore. And that's usually what we saw around here. Again, I couldn't tell you the last time I saw or heard a train in town. There's trains behind my house all the time. Yeah. Uh, I just don't hear them or see them. All right. Interstate system, you can see here's I-16. It starts in making ends in Savannah. Of course, the deep water ports, deltas, um, flight paths, and then railroads, of course. Um, again, aren't used an awful lot anymore to transport goods and, and such. Um, these four systems together um, enable Georgia to, um, to move goods in and out of the state. Um, and one of the things that, that really drives home the importance is for every billion dollars in goods that are um, transported in Georgia or exported in Georgia, there are roughly 16,000 jobs. So it's a big em employment factor um, for the state. We're going to look at four different eras of economy of the economy real quickly um, the colonial era from 1733 to 1800 the primary good was rice uh, but you also had silk remember georgia tried to grow silkworms didn't do a real good job of it but lumber indigo corn peas naval stores all of that was shipped out as part of that mercantile uh, mercantilism um, a lot of it went to europe um, services were mostly local. You had local craftsmen, people that made cloth, people that wove um, cloth, people that made furniture, silversmiths, shoemakers. Uh, but that was typically for the community, for the local area. It was not a big um, source of exports. During the antebellum era, of course, cotton is king. Um, but there's also some food crops, corn, tobacco, of course, is not a food, but wheat, oats, sweet potatoes, honey. Um, industry grows right along with the textile business, with, with the cotton business, um, cotton gins, but you have grist mills, you have textile mills, um, saw mills for sawing lumber. And, of course, Savannah becomes a huge shipping center. Post-war, post-Civil War, that's what we're talking about, to World War II, 1865 to 1940. The economy is depressed, um, mainly an agricultural-based economy. Um, farmers are growing peaches, watermelons, pecans, peanuts, um, and poultry becomes a huge um, 
a huge crop or a huge um, part of agriculture. Um, industry continues to grow. Cotton mills, cotton textiles, lumber mills, meat packing, commercial canning, all of those continue to grow in Georgia. And then modern Georgia, 1940 to today. Um, we have become more manufacturing or more industrial than agricultural. And that's been true since about 1950. There are more people employed in manufacturing than in agriculture today. Um, because of the manufacturing, transportation becomes important. Again, aviation, the interstate highway system, the deep water ports, and to a certain extent, railroads. Um, Georgia, particularly Atlanta, has become a business center. We are not reliant on agriculture anymore, and we haven't been for a long time. Although some people probably look at Georgia and go, it's just farms. It's not. About 80% of the nation's largest businesses have offices in Georgia, most in Atlanta, but not all. <clears throat> Some of those companies are Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola was invented by Dr. John Pemberton in 18, um, well, the late 1880s, middle 1880s. It sold in Atlanta. First Coke was sold in Atlanta in May of 1886 at Jacob's Pharmacy. 1891, it was purchased by Asa Candler, who created the Coca-Cola Company in 1892. So the Coca-Cola Company is well over 100 years old today. And under the, the leadership of President Robert Woodruff, that's a name you hear every day, um, Coca-Cola became an international product. You can go to any place in the world today and buy Coca-Cola. You can buy a Coke product. We're not talking about KFC. We're talking about Coca-Cola. KFC serves Pepsi products. They're owned by Pepsi-Cola. But you can go to China and buy Coca-Cola. You can go to Vietnam and buy Coca-Cola. You can go to Sudan. If you can find somebody that's selling it, you can buy Coca-Cola. Yes. All right. Um, Georgia Pacific was actually founded in 1927, just as things are getting really bad in Georgia, as the Great Depression is about to break out. Owen Cheatham begins what's known as the Georgia Hardwood Lumber Company. Um, a $12,000 investment, um, six of his own, six from outside investors. He starts the business. It's renamed Georgia Pacific in 1956. Why Georgia Pacific? Because it reaches from Georgia to wherever there are trees, wherever there are forests that are harvested, you're going to find Georgia Pacific. Uh, today, it's one of the world's largest manufacturers of forest products, paper products, uh, toilet tissue, face tissue, uh, paper towels, boxes, um, containers, um, copy paper, paper plates, napkins, notebook paper. Um, if it's made out of paper, Georgia Pacific makes it. Delta. Um, Started out as a crop dusting company in Louisiana. Um, early 1920s, the idea is to fight the boll weevil. It becomes Delta Air Service in 1928, um, and it moves to Atlanta in 1941 as um, an air passenger service. And today it's one of the largest airlines um, in the world making international flights. Uh, Atlanta used to be home to two other um, airlines, Eastern Airlines, and Southern Airlines. Both are out of business today. Southern had a tendency to fall out of the sky. So, well, If you've ever seen the movie We Are Marshall, plane crash that killed the Marshall University football team uh, back in the 70s, that was a Southern Airline. And then they had one that crashed into the Everglades. Um, yeah. So, but today Delta is the one that remains.
in Atlanta. If you're flying Delta, you just about have to go through Atlanta to get anywhere. Um, Home Depot is an Atlanta-based company um, started by Bernie Marcus and Arthur Blank. Uh, the idea is uh, to create a store where a person could go and buy everything they needed to do home improvement. Um, it became what is known as a big box store. There's about 2,000 Home Depots in the world today. Um, their business model, Marcus and, and Blank's business model, was adopted by stores like Walmart, Lowe's, um, Bass Pro Shops. Um, all kinds of different things are sold using this model that was created. You know, it's kind of a one-stop shop. You can buy everything. Why, why do we have all the writing on our hand? I'm just asking why. Well, Miss Barlow let y'all draw all over your hands? All right. Um, other Georgia companies, Goldkist, which is a chicken outfit, Zaxby's, of course, you know them, UPS, CNN, um, Cox Enterprises, which is a media company, cable TV, that sort of thing. Shaw Industries, they make carpet. Um, Bluebird, what do they do? Buses. Um, Lockheed Martin, airplane parts. Eat more chicken, of course, Chick-fil-A. And then Pinewood Studios, which is where most of the Marvel movies are filmed these days. Huh? All right. So film production in Georgia, speaking of Pinewood Studios, um, in 2016, which is the last time I went back and looked, I need to update this, I suppose. Um, but in 2016, Georgia hosted more film production than any other place in the world. Uh, that includes England, the United Kingdom, and California. Um, film LA, which does film studies, um, statistical studies, looked at 100 feature films. 17 out of those 100 were filmed in Georgia. 16 were filmed in the UK, 13 in Canada, and only 12 in California. About, well, a little over $2 billion were spent in 2016 in Georgia by film companies. Um, Passengers, The Fifth Wave, Allegiant, Captain America Civil War were all filmed in 2016 in Georgia. Uh, but it's not just feature films, it's also television. Georgia has become a, um, a place where TV production crews film. Programs like The Walking Dead has always been filmed in Georgia. In fact, if you go to Sanoa, yeah. Um, they have a, a neighborhood that is the movie set or the, the TV set. Um, and you can actually tour it. And it's actually a real neighborhood. People live in it. Um, but the Vampire Diaries, Stranger Things, which does that come out in October again? I hope. Um, all of those, no, all of those have been filmed in Georgia. I'm telling you, the only vampires I read about are and rice. Get out. Just get out. Vampires do not glisten. Vampires do not drink fruit juice. I know. I know. All right. So. All right. So, um, Lester Maddox, little blog written by Stan Deaton. There are three little questions that go along with it. Read it before you answer the questions. It's not very long. It's pretty interesting. And please note that you, your test is on Thursday. Please do not wait until Wednesday to study. 
Start studying now. May 6th. Well, it's got a date on it right there.